Hello everyone. So this is a tutorial on how to make wrinkles in GIMP. It's based upon Riker Beck's excellent tutorial and you can find that tutorial at resible.com and just search for Riker's blogspot. It's really good. The reason I'm doing it in YouTube is because I want to show you another technique which isn't mentioned in there and that's to use eye warp for giving some shape to the wrinkles. Um, I made myself a little template for the t-shirt on it and uh, it's quite plain, I've filled it and I've trimmed it. I'm also going to be using a new template which came out today or yesterday and it's by Chip Midnight, a really great guy and what it does is it gives a guide to the female to topography. You can download this template for both male and female at uh, the texture forum at semitool.com semitool.com secondlife.com and really useful uh, well done Chip, you and the other guys really do help us so I've got the template selected I'm going to turn that transparency down a little bit and I'm going to disable my Marla t-shirt front I need to give that a little bit more I can see it a bit better first thing I'm going to do, I've got a circle fuzzy brush selected and I've got it set to 50. I've got black for the foreground, white for the background. And so I'm now going to create a new layer and I'm going to call that shadows and it's going to be filled with transparency. So that's my shadow layer. Now the first, I just want to scroll in and um, I'm going to use Chip's little guide here. You can see the different shadings here and I'm going to use that as a guide for drawing some lines under the ladies bits because it's a ladies t-shirt I'm making. There we go. I'm not going to be too careful about this because I just want to really give you the idea of how this all works. pretty easy wasn't it. The next thing we want to do is we want to be able to we want to actually distort these a little bit. Um, so we're going to go to filters, distorts, and we're going to use eye warp. And you'll get up the screen and you'll see the preview window which will have little black lines in it. It can be a bit difficult to see. And I'm going to actually First of all, start off by moving some of them. So put the little crosshairs over and just pull around. Your deform radius allows you to change just where your cursor is, how much it, it turns. I'm going to put some swirl on that. Just make them a little bit more distorted. Look a little bit more natural. Pretty horrendous, really, and you wouldn't believe that these could be wrinkles, but you'll see. Um, the next thing to do is we want to put a bit of distortion on there, a bit of blur. So we've got a filters, blur, motion blur, and I'm using about 49 for the length of zero angle and linear. So let's blur those. Here we go. Now we need some highlights, so this where I do differ slightly from Riker's tut is I'm now going to uh, duplicate that layer, put that layer above it, I'm going to call that highlights. I do this for a reason, which will become apparent shortly. Then we go to colors, 
invert and change those bits to white. Okay. Now, when we come to actually blend these, we, we need to have them um, look a little bit natural. So we're going to change the highlight mode to overlay, which seems to work pretty well. And we're going to change the shadow mode to multiply. Okay. And now I'm going to go back, deselect the topography and reselect the t-shirt. Right, now it still doesn't look too good. The reason for this is when you do the motion blur, the the layers get shifted across. So I'm going to select highlights. I'm going to press M, which will move. I could also go up here and click on move. And I've got move the active layer. Now I'm going to click on here. And I'm going to use the up, down and sideways key, the little arrows key. I'm going to move the highlights so that I can see them. And you should be able to see them appearing now. And what this is doing is moving the layer down. Okay, now I want to do the same with the shadows a little bit. So click on the template and just move those shadows a little bit. So they look a bit more realistic. Here we go. And on the shadows, now it's selected. When you go into second life, they can look a bit um, a bit much. Okay, but on the highlights as well. I think. No, that looks like no. Leave the highlights as they are. Change the shadows once more. Yeah, that's probably about right. And there we are. I haven't touched the arms. So now what we'll do is we'll see what this looks like after we've saved it, we'll import it into Second Life and have a look at it. Be right back. I was unable to get the quality um, to be able to show you the t-shirt, so I just used a still photograph. Um, this is Marla Carfield. Marla's our match girl at the cave on Star Isle. She's dressed in a reasonable desired match girl outfit, which is fantastic. So I'm just going to quickly change the top and then we'll put you back with another photograph showing the t-shirt. And here we are with Marla wearing the t-shirt we just made. As you can see, it looks pretty good for a first effort. I hope you found this tutorial useful and make sure you check out Riker Beck's tutorial. And if you've got any questions, uh, just drop me a hotmail or an M in World. This is Dingnut Bellman signing out. Bye bye.